Science! Welcome to Science This Week. We talk a lot about NASA and SpaceX on this segment, um, considering the future of space exploration. But there are others in this new era of this space race, this, this idea that we're all focused on getting humanity back to space and to become an interplanetary society. One of the biggest contributors to this on the private sector is Sir Richard Branson. You probably know him. He's the billionaire philanthropist that created the Virgin Group back in the 1970s. And the Virgin Group spawned a ton of stuff you know today. Virgin Air, Virgin Airlines, Virgin Records, Virgin Megastores, and most recently, Virgin Galactic. Branson started Virgin Galactic in 2004, and its mission is to create suborbital space flight for tourism, for, for just you and I, and also suborbital space flight to bring space science and science experiments into space to be able to be utilized. In October of 2014, 10 years after creation, the first spaceship, Spaceship One, the spacecraft VSS Enterprise, was destroyed during a spaceflight test, killing one of the pilots aboard. This unfortunate circumstance set the, pa- set the timetable back a couple years for successful flight, as, as with any kind of rocket testing, unfortunately, that kind of stuff happens. It wasn't until December 13th of 2018, the VSS Unity, Spaceship Two, achieved the project's first suborbital space flight, reaching an altitude of 82.7 kilometers. So what does this mean exactly? Construction on the VSS Unity began in 2012 and was completed in 2016. Unity then began a series of ground and air tests before its historic flight. Unity was actually named by Stephen Hawking, and Hawking's own eye is the model of the eye insignia on the side of the spacecraft. And I'm actually showing you a really neat graphic that was provided by Virgin Galactic that kind of shows their testing road to space, and I'll walk you through it. Um, first, they had to prove the concept with Spaceship One, and they did that. That concept not only proved that every major system and technology was could be used, that it was being able to be modified and made better for Spaceship Two, which was Unity. The VSS Enterprise Spaceship One went through over 55 test flights, and all of that data gave an enormous amount of insight into Unity's construction and performance. Um, and then the Unity materials testing. Even before materials are shaped into the structures that make up the spaceship, they are subject to rigorous testing by the spaceship company. Um, This makes sure that all of the materials are as near perfect as possible before they're actually made into the spaceship itself. Then the VSS Unity component and subsystem testing. Each subsystem is tested and extensively tested by custom-made testing stands to ensure that over the course of a flight to space that they will work perfectly before they are ever even adapted into the spacecraft themselves. Then, once the spacecraft is finally completed, it undergoes integrated ground testing. Engineers, technicians, and pilots test to make sure that the landing gear deploys, that the environmental controls keep the cabin safe, that the cockpit displays and control functions work the way that they are designed. The entire time the vehicles are being tested, our pilots are undergoing extensive flight training with our flight simulation program, is what Virgin Galactic has decreed. Then the flight test program. It first starts off with captive carry. Now, Unity is attached to White Knight 2, which is the giant plane that brings it to a release altitude. The first few flights, it's never released. It's just a captive carry, just a test to make sure that it's all put together right. Then glide flights. It'll be carried aloft by White Knight 2 and released just to glide safely home. Then they test the rocket-powered flights. Its hybrid rocket motor, already qualified and proven through repeated tests on the grounds, will be fired in flight in the air. And then on top of that, the astronaut experience testing, they're, they're testing everything to do with the astronauts, the suits, the chairs they sit in, and also the off-nominal testing, having testing already everything they they tested to this point. They put it through tests to see what happens when the unexpected occurs to make sure that the safety of everything 
is underway. And then the final preparations before that historic flight. The to give you a little bit more, the scaled composites model 348 White Knight 2 is a quad jet cargo aircraft that is used to lift Spaceship 2 or the VSS Unity into space the spacecraft release altitude. The flight powered test the first one took place April 5th of last year in 2018 when a 30 second rocket firing accelerated Unity to a speed of Mach 1.87 and an altitude of 84,000 feet. The first suborbital space flight was successfully completed later that year, December 13th, surpassing the 50 mile altitude considered the boundary of outer space by NASA and the United States Air Force. Since then, the Unity has made a second successful trip in February of 2019 and is now undergoing modifications for commercial cabin and upgrades to the cockpit. And I do have a couple schematics I can show you. One of the plane itself, this is White Knight 2 with Spaceship 2 attached to it. And you can see the way that how big it actually is. And then just White Knight 2 without Spaceship 2 without the Unity, and then just Unity on its own. Also, here's a really cool graph of what the flight plat pattern actually is when it goes to space, how it takes off, the release from the mothership, and then it takes that rocket boost up to the apogee, which is in outer space, and then the re-entry into our atmosphere, and it's glide down to a safe landing. But what about the first pilots of the first ever crewed commercial vehicle in space? Well, meet Frederick Struckow. His, call, he's, his nickname is CJ. And uh, I have a short little video directly from Virgin Galactic introducing you to Frederick. It's challenging sometimes to step back and look at the big picture, and there's no greater definition of the big picture than looking at the planet from space. You know, it's a little bit serene. You don't see all the conflicts and all the troubles that we have to deal with on a daily basis. Well, I'm excited about the whole uh, prospect of flying people into space. Uh, you know, once you've been to space yourself, one of the funnest things to do is share it with another individual. Well, I got to do that in my previous job, and I look forward to doing that with our customers that we're going to be flying up there. So I was at uh, NASA for 18 years, and I flew four shuttle missions down there in NASA. Another thing to note about Frederick Struckow is he is a four-time NASA space shuttle pilot, and one of those missions was STS-128, which also took astronaut Nicole Stott and friend of the show up to the International Space Station. The second pilot is Mark Stuckey, call sign Forger. And I have a short little video about Mark right here. I've been lucky and I've flown a lot of unique aircraft. Obviously, the SR-71 Blackbird, you know, that log stand out there just instantly comes to mind. The SR-71 is difficult to fly. If you fly it manually, it's really designed to be flown on autopilot as much as possible, but I did fly it some manually, and, and it's very demanding. And here with Spaceship Two, you're flying. You're reading the displays. You're flying the vehicle, so it's very unique and challenging, but rewarding in its own way. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Remember what surprised me was it was not as loud as I thought it would be, and the motor was a lot smoother than I thought it would be. But the acceleration is pretty eye-watering and it's pretty instantaneous. It feels like a catapult shot. It's like you push the button and you are, you're off to the races, ready, go. <laughs> and it's gonna be a lot of fun for the passengers, I think. Mark is an incredible test pilot working for NASA, the military, and more. 9,000 hours in the air flying some of the most advanced planes to date. These guys brought the VSS Unity to space and successfully landed back on Earth for the very first time. And again, directly from Virgin Galactic, I have some really interesting footage of that historical flight.
55 seconds. 58 seconds. Later shut down. So after making history, both of these men received the FAA commercial astronaut wings. This historical achievement has been recognized by the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, and presented both of the men with their wings in a ceremony in Washington, D.C. So not only is this the first human space flight to be launched from American soil since the final space shuttle mission in 2011, but it's the very first time a crewed vehicle built for commercial passenger service has reached space. After all of this happened, commenting from the flight line, Sir Richard Branson said, many of you will know how important the dream of space travel is to me personally. Ever since I watched the moon landings as a child, I have looked up to the skies with wonder. We started Virgin nearly 50 years ago, dreaming big and loving a challenge. Today, as I stood among a truly remarkable group of people with our eyes on the stars, we saw our biggest dream and our toughest challenge to date fulfilled. It was an indescribable feeling, joy, relief, exhilaration, and anticipation for what is yet to come. Today, for the first time in history, a crewed spaceship built to carry private passengers reached space. Today, we completed our first revenue-generating flight, and our pilots earned their commercial astronaut wings. Today, we have shown that Virgin Galactic really can open space to change the world for good. We will now push on with the remaining portion of our flight test program, which will see the rocket motor burn for longer and VSS Unity fly still faster and higher towards giving thousands of private astronauts an experience which provides a new planetary perspective to our relationship with the Earth and the cosmos. This is a momentous day, and I could not be more proud of our teams who together have opened a new chapter of space exploration. George Whitesides, the CEO of Virgin Galactic and the spaceship company, also said, What we witness today is more compelling evidence that commercial space is set to become one of the 21st century's defining industries. Reusable vehicles built and operated by private companies are about to transform our business and personal lives in ways that are as yet hard to imagine. New enterprises are being created, which will become hugely valuable while enabling humanity to better manage some of its greatest future challenges. Today was a remarkable achievement brought about by the skill, dedication, and support of our shareholders, staff, customers, partners, and many other stakeholders. We extend our congratulations and thanks to each and every one of them. This is an incredible achievement in human history. As many achievements that have been made in recent years from SpaceX, 
NASA, and more, and including Virgin Galactic. This, All of this will only further all of the advances made in future of space exploration. And speaking of Virgin Galactic and the VSS Unity and taking private citizens, astronauts like you and I into space, would you do it? Would you be part of that first crew? I don't know about the first one, but I really hope that in my lifetime, I will get to ride on one of these incredible spacecraft. If you'd like to hear more about one of the pilots, Mark Stuckey, or Forger, you can tune in to episode 141 of Fueled by Deathcast, season three, episode 37, and catch our interview with Mark Stuckey.